Hey guys, War Bunny Productions here, and before we get into the video, I wanted to thank you all so much for over 1,000 subscribers. It's a huge mile mark for me here on the channel, and I'm absolutely excited to see what the future has in store for the channel. In the meantime, thank you all so much for the support, and I hope you all enjoy today's video. Hello everyone, and welcome back to War Bunny Productions. Today we have a special treat for you guys. We will be taking a look at the Texas Transportation Museum and we will also do some rail vanning down in Temple, Texas. The Texas Transportation Museum is located on the northeast side of San Antonio and is not too far from the San Antonio International Airport and runs on half a mile of trackage. Don't let the small appearance of this museum fool you. This museum is the perfect example of how much you can do in just a little space. Located right across the street from the museum is Union Pacific trackage, as we can see this Union Pacific train passing on by. This, in my opinion, adds more life and even more of a railroad feel to the museum. The museum has a fleet of four locomotives, three of which are operational and one is a display piece. The first locomotive we'll be taking a look at is former United States Army RSD-4 number 4035. It was built by Baldwin in the early 1950s. The locomotives were built to help serve overseas in the Korean War. 74 were built, and of those 74, 44 did serve overseas, and had 8.5 diameter wheels to serve overseas, which just so happens to be what the Russians use on their railroads. Those numbered 1247 to 1276 were built for domestic use in the United States, while those numbered 4001 to 4044 were built for overseas use in Korea. While it is unknown if 4035 did serve overseas, it is still a nice piece of railroad history to see preserved today. The next locomotive we'll be taking a look at has also seen military use. United States Air Force GE-44 Tunner number 7071. Built in 1942 by GE, it was shipped over to England during World War II to help with the war effort and usually would carry supplies around Air Force bases. After the war, it was sent to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where it continued to serve until the 1970s. The other operating locomotive is an 040 Switcher No. 1. It was built by Baldwin in 1925 to serve in a coal plant. We'll see this engine later on in the video. The last locomotive they have is their only non-operational one, which is a 280 number 6. Built by Baldwin in 1911, it served the Moscow, Camden, and San Augustine Railroad, owned by the W.T. Carter and Brother Company. It continued service until the mid-1950s. One of the neat things about this locomotive is that you can actually go into the cab and take a look around. You can also go ring the bell on the engine. One of the main attractions of the museum are the trains they run every 60 minutes on Saturdays and Sundays, starting at 10.30 and ending at 3.30.
As the train was doing its run, they started turning on the GE44 tunnel. Today we are treated to some incredible footage as we got to see them do some switching around the museum. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sights and sounds of railroading.
As we can see here, they had a little trouble trying to disconnect the car from the locomotive. But with some effort and a little bit of time, they finally got it disconnected. Real trains are not the only thing they got at the museum. They also have an extensive collection of model trains as well. They have a huge outdoor G-scale layout, which unfortunately was not running any trains at the time of our visit. They also have a huge building filled with lots of different train layouts, varying in different scales.
In addition, they also have lots of different vintage automobiles around the museum, including in this building here. As said earlier, here is 040 number 1. They are trying to get a speeder out of the shed these two were in, and number 1 was blocking the way. So they had to pull it out of the shed so that they can get the speeder out. There are so many other things here at the museum that I did not get to cover in this video, and the stuff we did get to see were amazing. If you're ever in the San Antonio area, I would definitely recommend a visit to the Texas Transportation Museum. Link to their website will be down in the description. A couple of days later, we would take a small trip to Temple, Texas and see all the wonderful things in store for us there. Sorry for the loud wind of the videos, it was unfortunately something I couldn't control while filming. In addition to the BNSF main line through Temple, there's also a small museum that has lots of neat equipment. While it mostly consists of rolling stock, it also has some locomotives as well. On display is ATSF HH600 number 2301, which was built by Alco in 1937. Across the track from it is XATSF slash BNSF GP7U number 1680. It was built as ATSF GP7 number 742 in 1957 and was rebuilt sometime later in its life. It was donated to the museum by the BNSF. Also in Temple is this beautiful XATSF station which was built in 1911. This red brick and Stuco Santa Fe Depot is a quintessential example of the Prairie View Arts architecture. Of course, the star piece of the collection is XATSF 462 number 3243 and was built by the Baldwin Locomotive Works in 1921. Temple is also home to the Centrum Mod Model Railroad Club, 
which is housed in the historic X atsf Moody Depot. A link to their website and the website of the museum will be down in the description. After waiting for about 30 minutes in Temple, we finally had caught a train. This was an eastbound rock train which was leaving Temple Yard. He gave us a nice little horn show as he passed by. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I wanted to thank you all so much again for a thousand subscribers. I can't wait to see what the future has in store for this channel. In the meantime, at the Centromod Model Railroad Club in Temple, Texas, this is Warbonnet Productions, out.